You're listening to the Weekly Wrap-Up on Sprott Money News. Welcome back to the Sprott Money News Weekly Wrap-Up. It's the first Friday of March, March the 5th, 2021. I'm your host, Craig Hemke. Eric is still sidelined this week, and so joining us is David Brady. David is my fellow contributor uh, at the Sprott Money website. He writes an article every week, so you should visit SprottMoney.com and check that out. It's usually Thursday or Friday each week that they post it. But he's also a fantastic technical analyst, uh, not just simply looking at the charts, but also factoring in fundamental things as well, a full picture. And you can find him on Twitter, and he's a great follow at the handle Global Pro Trader, all one word. David, thank you for joining me this week. Hey, Craig. Listen, thanks very much for having me on again. You got big shoes to fill, my friend. After uh, Rick Rule last week, uh, and of course, Eric, uh, once he gets back. But I know you can handle You've been on before, and you do a great job. And again, I can't emphasize enough the value of, if you're on Twitter, following David. Again, Global Pro Trader. Um, David, we've had an interesting week, obviously, so we should start there. A uh, lot of expectations given the rise in yields that uh, Chairman Powell would say something yesterday to kind of ease what seems to be a growing liquidity squeeze, and yet he did nothing. Uh, we've got the FOMC meeting coming up a week from this coming Wednesday, so we're still talking 12 days away. Uh, what do you make of the current action in the metals? And we'll get to kind of future stuff in a minute. Yeah, uh, well, it, it's related. There's a number of factors involved, but one of the principal ones right now is the uh, real yields and nominal yields. Given that the official inflation rate to CPI, which which is a joke, but uh, given that's been relatively constant over the past few years, uh, real yields, nominal yields, it's more or less the same thing. What we're seeing right now, as you know, is that real yields have spiked uh, recently. They've been they bottomed out uh, August sixth, August seventh. Same with nominal yields. Um, and uh, for that reason, you've seen gold and silver come under pressure. But the light is at the end of the tunnel here uh, because when I've posted this on Twitter, if you look at the – most people look at the 10-year, and yes, you should look at that. I use that for the real yields. Um, but for the nominal yields, the best chart I have is the 30-year uh, because the 100-month moving average on that – has uh, been tested uh, so many numerous times over the past uh, 30 years, going back to the 19, 1990. Uh, so it's time tested, and back in October of uh, 2018, September October of 2018, when yields were spiking up towards that 100-month moving average, I said like if we go above that or hit that line or go above it go long bonds because we're going to go sub 2% or 1% in the yield and it was based on the reliability of that moving average over time well here we are again where we we went down to you know below 1% and now we're going back up uh, we're around uh, 2. Point, I think we hit a high of 2.41% and uh we hit an RSI of 84 in the process. What I'm looking for on the daily chart is a negative, negatively divergent higher high. What that means is the uh, uh, yield going above 2.41%, perhaps as high as the moving average itself to 2.75, but in the process uh, registering a lower RSI. Uh, that's a negatively divergent higher high. And that's the ideal scenario for me for a peak in yields. And then they start to head down again. And the same with real yields. Um, now, what will trigger that, uh, even though Powell you know, did not meet people's expectations uh, in his speech yesterday, I fully expect that they're going to come in and intervene to cap yields. I mean, look, as far as I'm concerned, and I'd like to get your opinion too, Craig, they have no choice. Uh, because yes. with the amount of debt and the amount of money printing that they're going to do, you know, per the IMF and then what Biden did with the, or is doing with his two trillion tri uh, stimulus. That's just the beginning. They are going to have to buy all of that debt now. So that means the debt is going to explode even further. Well, if the yield on that debt goes north of three percent on the uh, 30 year, uh, one and a half to one point six percent on the 10 year, the interest cost in that debt will be greater than the tax receipts of the United States. Mm -hmm. Now, I take this down to an individual. If you've got credit card debt 
and your income can't even meet the minimum payment requirement, you're technically insolvent. You're bankrupt. And that's the, that's the situation that the U.S. risks if yields go much higher. And the Fed knows this. So they're absolutely going to step in. The alternative is collapse of everything. So, right. so it's only a matter of time. And I'm looking at that 30-year yield in particular. And I think we're going to see the same thing again. We're going to see that a move up uh, a little higher here potentially. It may have topped, but I think we can still have move, uh, room on the upside. The Fed steps in, they're going to cap yields, and uh, whether yields go down or stay where they are, the fact that they're printing money, and some of that money will fail, uh, find its way into the economy, uh, and actually I think the amount that goes into circulation will increase going forward. I mean, can you imagine if we get UBI at some point? And that is going to cause real yields to drop. There's an asymmetric risk to the downside in real yields. And once we get that, you know, Gold and silver are just going to explode higher. Yeah. I mean, I, I know it's a lot of pain to endure for the precious metals investors, and we've gone through this. But, you know, everybody has a short-term memory. We went from 1167 in 2018 to 2089 uh, in August. I mean, that's a near $1,000 rally. Uh, you know, let's keep every, ourselves in check here. And si since then, we've had a $400-plus uh, retracement. I think there's a rally coming that's going to supersede that previous high. And, uh, you know, everybody has to get ready for that. But I, I love the bearishness. I love the increasing bearishness. I mean, getting targets on the downside of 1,500, 1,400, 1,300, 1,000. I love to hear that stuff. The reason being, sentiment is a wonderful contrarian indicator in, in uh, gold and silver. It's time-tested for years. And when, when you hear this side of bearish sentiment, after all the bullish sentiment we had at the peaks, you you know that the end is near here on the downside and that we're close to a bottom. Yeah. And I believe it's coming in days, a uh, couple of weeks tops. Well, that's good to hear. I, yes, I'm watching uh, those real yields as well. That's going to be the key. And, and yes. the Fed has a history. You talk about charts with a history. The Fed has a history as well of managing the debt by trying to inflate it away by imposing yield curve control. That's what they did after World War II. Yep. Um, Dave, the hard part is picking out where that rate might be, the nominal rate. You mentioned some numbers earlier that you're watching. Was that on the long bond, the 30-year long bond? Yes. The, the, the move, that 100-month moving average is at 275 currently. Okay. Uh, back in uh, late 2018, it, it, it uh, stuck its nose above there, uh, the yield, uh, but uh, it turned out to be a, the correct call. If you'd gone long there, you would have made a ton of yep. money. Okay. Um, and it could do the same thing again. So 275 to 3% if it gets there. Uh, it doesn't have to. But once you start seeing it going back down again, uh, that's when gold and silver are bottomed and they go, yep. uh, go north. All right. We always get uh, a handful of questions each week, not as many as when Eric is here. But we always invite your questions at the email address submissions at SprottMoney.com. I've got three of them here. Uh, that I think I'd, I'd love to get your opinion on, uh, David. Let me just start with the first one. You know, we're talking about another $1.9 trillion in U.S. stimulus on top of the $900 billion a few months ago and everything that was done last year. And, you mm -hmm. know, there's this idea that all this money printing should be reflected, you know, it's devaluing the existing dollars, adding to the debt. You'd think gold would be going higher, but as we've talked about, the price of gold traded by, you know, found by trading of derivatives and the derivative key off of real interest rates primarily. So that's that answer there. But um, what do you think? Uh, will there be a bounce? Maybe we get this turn when that stimulus package is passed, if it passed. What do you what do you think about all that? Well, let's take a step back. If you look back at March 2020, uh, one of the trigger points for the uh, rally in gold and silver was the Fed, uh, Powell coming out on that Sunday and uh, slashing the uh, Fed funds rate by 1% overnight, and at the same time saying that it, they would do whatever it takes to support the economy and so forth. What happened next? Gold and silver just shot higher. Um, we got to August, and uh, I you know, made a call back in July ahead of that, that one of the specific reasons why I expected that gold and silver were going to run into uh, a peak and then pull back significantly was because the, the, the Fed has uh, uh, signaled that it's going to cut back on its stimulus, 
which it did. It cut it by 75%. And then in August, everybody expected the emergency uh, benefits for the unemployed to be extended. I said there's a risk that they don't extend it. That's the risk on the fiscal side. So, And that's exactly what happened. Yep. They, they, they allowed them to expire. So when you had monetary stimulus slashed 75%, fiscal stimulus cut off, what did gold and silver do? They peaked and went down. Now, here we are on the other end of this. Biden's announced two, let's round numbers, two trillion in stimulus. You think that's the end of it? No, right. UB, universal basic income is next. The IMF came out in January and told governments around the world to spend, spend, and then spend some more like drunken sailors. Um, th this is only the beginning. So if you know, liquidity is what drives markets, and the, when the Fed and the government combined, MMT, uh, are you know, spending money like drunken sailors back in March uh, through June, July, you know, gold and silver rocketed higher. Uh, once they, uh, uh, you know, took their foot off the accelerator, uh, gold and silver peaked and went down. Well, what's happening now? They're starting to put their foot to the uh, pedal to the metal again. Yep. So, yeah, it's only a matter of time. It's uh, Gold and silver are coming close to a bottom here, and it's going to go much higher. We're going to get new record highs in gold and potentially in silver, too. How about this one? You mentioned silver. Uh, often it seems a gold leads silver, you know, silver kind of straddling the divide between a monetary metal and an industrial metal. Um, mm -hmm. Silver has been doing much better than gold, at least as of late until this week. Uh, why is that, do you think? Well, the bull market <clears throat> for me in uh, precious metals has been established. Uh, we're getting, uh, if you look at a monthly chart or weekly chart, you can see we're getting higher lows and higher highs. Uh what typically happens in a bull market, as you know, Craig, is, yeah, gold leads the way, but silver plays catch up and just blows, but waves goodbye right. to gold as it passes it by. Well, that when gold, when we were in that rally going up to 2089 in gold, that's exactly what happened. Gold started the rally, same as in December 2015, and silver bottomed in January 2016. Silver played catch up and passes by, and, and we, we've seen that. And, you know, just to use basic, you know, uh, economic or financial theory, silver is like a high beta play on gold, which means that when gold goes up, it may lead, but gold and silver is going to blow past it. And we've seen this in the bull markets from 2000 to 2011, from 1974 to 1980. In each case, silver outperformed gold by one point uh, with a beta of 1.5. And uh, there's no reason not to expect that to happen again. The 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 uh, Reddit crowd. Uh, helped the situation recently by, you know, uh, attacking the shorts in the uh, futures market. Unfortunately, they're dealing with the bullion banks on the other side, not some hedge fund. So it's a little bit more difficult. But they, they, they learn quickly, very smart crowd. They started buying physical. And if you try to buy physical right now, I mean, if you can get it, the premiums are sky high. So uh, I, I think that the uh, silver will continue to outperform gold. But you will get short-term retracements. If you look at the gold-silver ratio right now, we've had a nice drop from, what, 120 down to close to 60. Uh, and it's been a five-wave move down. I've been saying that I expect a bounce in that gold-silver ratio, and we may have already started. But once uh, that bounce is done, silver is going to blow past gold again. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, and again, uh, whether it's viewed as an industrial metal with all of the stimulus and infrastructure and everything else going on in the world, or maybe a new commodity bull market, whether it's viewed as a monetary metal and all of the investment demand, it uh, certainly has an intriguing picture going forward this year. And so going forward this year, David, I'd, I want to wrap up with this most recent article that you've written for Sprott Money. Again, just go to SprottMoney.com and at the top of the page, there's a navigation bar where you can find all of the articles by their featured writers of which uh david and i are both uh considered but i always make sure i read david's that's for sure and i would encourage everybody to do that uh, in sure. your latest Dave, we start you're kind of certain eh, discussing the environment uh for a bottom and a turn to this consolidation phase uh why don't we wrap this up by you kind of paraphrasing some of what you wrote there and uh what you expect not so much you know next week but in the weeks and months ahead yeah, 
basically, I went through the various factors that I use in my process to uh, that I've used for years and has been uh, I, I constructed based on looking at the peaks and troughs going back uh, 15 to 20 years in gold and silver and in indeed in all asset markets. And um, the, the crux of that process is when all of those data, those tools, those data points all point in the same direction, you can be, have a high degree of confidence that it's going to go in that direction. And right now, when you look at fundamentals, intermarket analysis, positioning, Elliott wave, sentiment, technicals, even the manipulation, uh, everything is starting to look very, very positive for gold and silver, just as it did back in uh, half, the second half of 2015 when I started buying. So at the risk of repeating myself, you know, we, we're seeing uh, stimulus come through from Biden. You've seen the IMF call for more government spending. You've got Powell coming out and reiterating his whatever it takes uh, comment. Uh, you've got uh, Yellen uh, hinting about MMT. You've got the uh, pending yield curve control coming. And then you've got sentiment has turned bearish in the market. Uh, positioning the bullion banks have used these sell-offs to uh, reduce their shorts. We don't know if they cleared them out, but they're certainly in a better position right now. The technicals, uh, I posted a bunch of tweets showing that the RSIs and the MACDs that we're seeing right now either match or are below the March 20 uh, uh, lows in gold and silver. So uh, to say that it's extreme oversold is putting it mildly. Across all of my indicators, everything is pointing north. Now, is it a hundred percent guarantee that we we're going up? No, nothing's a hundred percent certain. But the probability, the odds, are heavily favoured towards a bottom here shortly. We've come down to sixteen ninety, sixteen eighty five. We could see an overshoot to sixteen fifty, but the upside from my perspective is a new high. So you're talking about twenty one hundred plus, maybe twenty three hundred plus. So you're squaring fifty dollars or forty dollars of risk against potential upside of uh, 400 to 500 dollars that kind of trade is a no-brainer from my perspective yep i i agree the hard part and i've used this analogy quite a bit david i would imagine you agree with it. it's like riding the bull market is like riding the actual bull in a rodeo man <laughs> yeah. that thing is gonna buck and try to throw you every step of the way and the only way you win is by making it to the bell Exactly. But I will say this. One of the reasons uh, – this is why I harp on about sentiment so much, especially in the, the precious metal sector. If you go back and look at the peaks and troughs in the past, go pick out the charts and look at the conditions back then from a fundamental sentiment, sentiment technical analysis perspective and positioning of the cut data. And you go back and look at that and what the conditions were and look for consistencies at each of those peaks and troughs. They'll be inverse, but they'll be consistent. Then you get a feel for what are the things to look for going forward that will show you that there's a peak or a trough about to hit. And the beauty of that process, it means that you can maintain objectivity when there's a whole bunch of noise around you and everybody's getting euphoric or depressed about what's going on in the markets. And I recommend everybody to do that because that's what I've done and it, that, that process works extremely well. Yep. Well, all right, my Irish friend, uh, we are almost to St. Patrick's Day, which this year is that next FOMC meeting. So we may all need a few green beers by the time Powell's done talking <laughs> on Wednesday the 17th. But that does note for everyone that spring is right around the corner. And of course, it's a perfect time for spring with the Sprott Money Signature Sale. More sale products sprouting up than ever before. The sale you've been waiting for is bigger and better, but it's only running from now until March 20th. And yes, we do have stock on hand in inventory. You can check out and order all of our gold, silver, and platinum specials on SprottMoney.com. But remember, you can always just simply pick up the phone and call as well. 888-861-0776. And lastly, if you enjoy these weekly wrap-up segments, uh, the Ask the Expert monthly segment, or anything that we do uh, here at Sprott Money, please be sure to like the channel that you're on, maybe share some comments, subscribe, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we'd very much appreciate that. That helps us to widen uh, our broadcast network and get the word about, about precious metals. Speaking of getting the word out about precious metals, my friend David Brady does a fantastic job. Again, you can find him on Twitter at the Twitter handle Global Pro Trader. David, thank you so much for your time today. You did a great job sitting in for Eric. 
And thanks very much, uh, Craig. And last word, we're close to the bottom, folks, and the risk reward is dramatically to the upside. That's exactly that's and that's the right way to look at it. And again, no investment in physical precious metal where you diversify yourself out of dollars uh, is ever really a bad idea. It's always going to be beneficial going forward, and uh, that's Absolutely. a great way to look at it too. David, thank you so much for your time. Thanks again, Craig. Much appreciated, my friend. And from all of us here at Sprott Money News at SprottMoney.com, thank you for listening, and have a great weekend.